Howdy, my name is Zach Buckle. For those of you that are new here, I am a market farmer in Cody, Wyoming, which is where we are right now. And I have a market farm that's about a half an acre of growing space right now that we are scheduled to reach $100,000 in sales this year by growing two to three crops a year in every single bed throughout the farm. And basically we're focusing on a really high production crops in a very small space. And in this video, I'd like to go over how I've used the same concept in a garden. And basically I forgot about this garden back in June. I have spent almost no time paying attention to it. And there is still $122 worth of food in this garden. And I think it's a huge lesson in gardening. If you're somebody who is incredibly busy like me and doesn't have a lot of time to grow a garden, but you still want the benefits of growing a garden, this video is for you because this is actually still a huge success. Um, even though I've totally neglected it, uh, there is tons of food in this garden. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you how I did this. Um, and hopefully give you some tips on how you can do this with very little effort and very little cost in your backyard. This is a 25 by two and a half foot bed, which is not very much space. That's um, 75 square feet. No, that's 63 square feet of growing space. So almost everybody has that in their backyard. And if you're able to actually put a little bit more time into a garden than an hour per season, you could probably turn that $122 into three or $400 with the techniques that I'm going to share in this video. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get into it. Okay. So what we've got here is two plants of broccoli, two plants of cauliflower, four plants of Tuscan kale. All of this bed was planted on the same day back in June. First week in June sometime, I spent about a half an hour planting this whole bed with plants that I grew myself and some seeds. Most of the seeds didn't work out, but that's mostly just because, again, uh, I didn't pay attention to this at all after that day. And the plants are doing great. So what we have here are two plants of broccoli and I have been harvesting broccoli on the farm for the past couple of weeks. And I could tell these are twice as big as the heads I was growing on the farm. And they were about a pound each on the farm. So I'm going to guess these are two pounds each, maybe more, but let's just be conservative. This is at least four pounds of broccoli. These are huge, but broccoli is really light compared to cauliflower. So say this is four pounds of broccoli and four, at the market, I'm selling broccoli at about $4 a pound. Some farms do five, but really high quality organic broccoli is worth about that. So I'm going to say this is $16 worth of food. So here we've got cauliflower. Cauliflower is looking a lot smaller. This one's not doing that well. Um, so I'm guessing cauliflower weighs a lot more than broccoli. Again, I've been growing this on the farm also. And I'm guessing this is going to yield about two pounds of cauliflower because it's so dense. And there's another plant behind here that will mature. And between the two of these, I'm guessing at least you're going to get two pounds of cauliflower. About the same price as broccoli. Let's say this is $8 worth of food. $4 a pound, $8 of food. These four kale plants, we've already, already harvested at least eight bunches of kale. Um, honestly, probably more than that, but I'm going to be real conservative. Eight bunches of kale, eight ounces each. If you go to the store and look at what kale is, organic kale is worth, it's at least $3 a bunch. At the market, that's what I'm selling it at. So this is eight bunches. We're going to get at least another four because it regrows. You know, part of the style of farming that I use on a half an acre is planting a lot of crops that regrow and keep producing throughout a long time window. Kale is one of those. So we're going to get at least another four bunches out of this. I'm guessing just conservatively, we get 12 total bunches of kale out of these four plants. That's $36 in food. 
Okay, so now we've got a section of beets, green onions, and really badly germinated carrots. And the carrots are that bad because I wasn't paying attention to it. And when you first plant carrots, you really gotta stay on it and pay attention to it every day. I planted these right before I went out of town. This is what I got. So this is a big, pretty much the biggest loss in the whole bed because there's this huge bare spot of nothing. But even still, we got all of this that's a ton of food. And I'll show you how much food we got here. So this is a five foot section of beets that I planted on that day. And look how big they are now. They were planted as transplants. Uh, and so were the green onions. So that's why we have so big beets. Um, and we could have harvested these probably three weeks ago and replanted to something else. But for this video, I'm just going to talk about one crop per bed. And I'm guessing there is at least 10 pounds of beets in this five foot section, probably a lot more. Um, I want to be real conservative here just to show you how much potential there is in this. Um, because I think there's actually probably close to 15 or 20. These are huge. This is almost a pound of beets right here, just because I've harvested thousands of pounds of beets in my farming career. And I know that this is really, really big, but just conservatively, let's say there's 10 pounds of beets here. I sell beets for three to four dollars per bunch at the market, and it's about a pound of beets per bunch. You know, that's on the high end. If you buy bulk organic beets at Costco or something, I'm guessing it's going to be one to two dollars a pound. So I'm splitting the difference for this video and saying these 10 pounds of beets are worth two dollars a pound. That's twenty dollars in food right here. That's not including the greens. If you really like Swiss chard, beet greens are basically Swiss chard. And that's a whole nother crop. If you're really into spinach kind of flavor, um, this is a great alternative to summer spinach. So I'm not even counting that as food as a part of your grocery budget. But if you're really gung-ho, this is actually really good. I'm not a huge fan of the greens, but a lot of people eat them. But let's just say that's $20 in food. Okay, now we've got green onions over here. These were all transplants that I planted on that day uh, with about eight to 10 seeds per plug. And there's, I think, I don't know, two or three feet of bed space. We've already harvested four or five bunches out of here. I'm guessing there's another six or so. So let's just say there's 10 bunches of green onions. And when I say a bunch, we're talking bigger than the grocery store bunch, okay, of phenomenally high quality gourmet green onions. And I sell these at the market for $3 each, but at the store, they're probably $2. So let's just say they're $2 a piece. That's another $20 in food right there, minimum. And again, if I was really on the ball here, we could have harvested this a couple weeks ago and replanted to a fall crop but that's another story. Okay, so there's $20 there. These carrots are the biggest failure in the bed, but even still, with this poorly germinated bed, I planted four roads direct seeded with my hands on that day, and we basically got one row, but that's just part of farming, you know? You have a plan, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Just like Mike Tyson says on my shirt and sometimes you get punched in the mouth. That's what this is. And that's a big part of farming and gardening. Things don't go according to plan. Nature is more in charge than you are. But, and I just, you know, dropped the ball on this, full disclosure, but I'm guessing there's at least one pound of carrots there. Um, I'm not gonna harvest them for a couple more weeks, let them get a little bit bigger. You know, one of the easy ways to increase your yields on carrots is just wait a little bit longer, let them get bigger and you'll, increase the yield. We probably could make this two pounds, but it's such a small amount of carrots. I don't really care. And I literally have truckloads of them coming off the farm right now. So I'm not too worried about it, but that's just say this is one pound of carrots, uh, maybe one and a half. We'll just say that's $3 in food. Okay. I sell carrots 
three dollars a pound basically at the farmer's market right now uh sometimes a year they're worth a lot more like in the shoulder seasons but um i'm guessing this is one one and a half pounds of carrots i'm just gonna ballpark it that's three dollars in carrots okay so now we're on to my personal favorite crop which is celery and we've got four plants here again they were all planted that first week in june and they're going to yield about two pounds of celery each before the frost and i kind of planned for these to be in the ground the whole growing season and not get a second crop because i know how long celery takes to grow and we started off with six plants but two of them died just because i wasn't paying attention um that's part of farming and we had a couple of cabbage plants over here and some lettuce that all died so there's a lot of failures right in this spot but one of the cabbage plants lived, we harvested it, and it's worth about $3 a head. It's a two pound head, big softball size. Um, we already harvested that, but it was beautiful. I'm sure it was over two pounds. And you know, cabbage, I've seen organic cabbage anywhere from one to $2 a pound. So let's just say that two pound cabbage was worth around $3 conservatively. And I am talking about organic prices at least in this video. I'm not talking about, you know, your real cheap, conventional produce at the far, at the grocery store. So I'm trying to go in between like farmer's market and organic pricing at the store. Um, and farmer's market's a little bit higher than organic, you know, but these four heads of celery are gonna yield about two pounds each. And again, I've seen celery anywhere from a dollar to $4 a pound organically at the store, you know, $1 a pound at Costco or a little more um, so I'm just going to say conservatively $2 a pound for celery, two pounds per plant times four equals $16 in food right here. And these will be ready. Uh, I know just based on what's growing in my field, I'm pretty confident these will be ready by about, some of these are going to be ready in about two weeks. Some of them in about two weeks later, just because they didn't all grow evenly. But by basically October 1st, I bet all of these will be a harvestable and roughly on average two pounds each. This middle guy will probably be three pounds, but let's just say this is $16 worth of food. Okay, so how did I accomplish all of this? Well, the first ingredient is planting and forgetting. So I planted this whole bed in June with transplants that I grew myself. And I forgot about it basically because I had a labor shortage on the farm. I had to run the farm basically by myself. So I had no time to be paying attention to this. And so if you, if having no time to run a garden sounds like your life, this video is for you, but I had no time. I planted it. I forgot about it. And this is the end result. I think it's pretty good. Um, given having no time because i wanted to spend a lot more time in here but i didn't um so i planted it all in june with transplants i seeded the carrots and that didn't work obviously i seeded this little section with hakari turnips that didn't work obviously i didn't spend the time to pay attention to moisture levels every day for a week and then all of these transplants i had started by hand uh, based on a planting schedule that I use. Um, so the broccoli and kale were all seeded sometime in April. The green onions were seeded sometime around then. The beets were seeded probably first week in May. The celery was seeded back first week in March and cabbage around mid April or something. So the actual time I spent seeding, maybe 15 minutes total, because each one of these crops takes a couple minutes to seed by hand. You just have to st stay on schedule with the planting schedule. So that's the real key to success here is, you know, back in March when people are freezing and not even thinking about gardening at all, that's when I seeded that celery. So if you have that schedule and you stick to it, that's how you can produce this kind of food in a tiny space. And so having a place to start your plants is a huge part of this success. You know, we live in a very cold climate here in Wyoming. It gets down to 40s and 50s at the highest 
at night. So things grow really, really slowly. So we have to have transplants to get a crop at all in our growing season. And part of my strategy with gardening and farming is to get two crops as much as possible in your growing space. This obviously didn't work this year because I just didn't pay attention to it. I neglected it. So we're really only going to get one. But if you have transplants, it allows you to grow your first crop a lot faster than if you were just to, if I was just to seed those beets in the ground, they'd be half the size right now. So we planted those beets as transplants and they grew a lot faster, a lot bigger, and it takes no time to do that. Celery, you have to grow with transplants because it just takes a million years to grow. You know, it's 80 days to maturity from a transplant and that transplant's usually about 10 weeks old. So we planted, we seeded that celery first week in March. We didn't plant it here until first week in June. So that's, uh, what's that? That's 12 weeks old. That's a 12 week old plant by the time it goes in the ground. But it takes you no time to, to start seed that plant. All you gotta do is you have a little nursery spot in your living room with lights and maybe even a windowsill, but the windowsill is kind of a problem because it gives you leggy plants, but you have a little spot like that you just water it every day and you've got your transplants ready to go first week in June, plant the whole garden out. And I do have an advantage because I have a farm, but my nursery is extremely redneck right now. Okay. It's a bunch of pallets and I have a little propane heater that heats the plants. So all these plants were heated with a really bad nursery. Honestly, if you had a nursery in your living room, it's going to be better than what I had. So, this was all done with a really crappy infrastructure. So having plants ready to go made this possible. And then planting at the right spacing in each little five foot block. I go over that in my gardening course. And now we have this abundance with almost no effort. The other huge ingredient to making this as successful as it is, given the amount of time I've put in, is no dig style gardening. This is Charles Dowding's style of gardening. I'm a huge fan of him. And I think it's an amazing way to garden because look at what I've accomplished here with an hour of my time this year. We set up this garden all no dig with cardboard and six inches of compost, six inches of wood chips on the pathways. And the weeds have been non-existent basically. There's a couple of weeds in here, um, but if I had actually paid attention to it over the past three months, there would be zero weeds. You know, when I say weeds, we got, okay, we got a little dandelion over here. We got some random tree seed over here. We've got some, I don't even know what that is. And now that little section is clear. I mean, nothing. So if you're a person that's grown a garden and you have a jungle of weeds by July, this style of gardening is for you. And so that's a huge part of this low maintenance style of gardening, high production. Um, that's basically how I did this. And uh, there's a huge room for potential to grow a lot more. Okay, so it cost me about $20 in compost because I put an inch of compost down on this bed, which takes five minutes. You know, I did that back in May. Uh, I've spent roughly $10 in seed and potting soil to grow the plants. And I'm kind of being on the high end there. I bet it's less than that because it, you know, I had enough seed and potting soil to grow 10 times as many plants as we have here, but I'm just guessing roughly $10. So that's $30 in hard cost. And it took me about an hour of my time. Um, because I'm just going to guess it took me half an hour to plant this a few minutes, 15, you know, 15, 20 minutes of seeding time to plant all of these. And then I spent maybe five, 10 minutes weeding this once. So an hour of my time and we grew $122 in food. And that's me not paying attention at all. And I think that's kind of low because it depends on where you buy all that food. So that's $122 in savings at the grocery store by basically just planting and forgetting. If I had not forgotten and I had actually been on the ball, 
this number, that $122 would have been at least $200 by now because we would have had 15 pounds of carrots here, about 15 pounds of turnips here. Um, if I'd actually been successful in paying attention, you know, we probably would have had $200 in food right there. And the real potential in this is the carrots and turnips and the green onions and beets and the cabbage and lettuce, all of them would have been removed by now and we would have had room to plant a fall crop. I'm behind the eight ball this year and I'm not gonna really have time, but if we had time, because uh, I know this works because I'm doing it on the farm right now. We are already planted the entire field in fall crops like spinach, carrots, stuff like that. I'm, I'm much more on top of the timing with the farm than I am with this garden bed because that's my income source right now. I have to focus on that. But if I had done the exact same stuff that I did in the field here, that $200 we could have earned would have turned into $350 at least. You know, we could have filled this whole section with winter spinach. That spinach would have been mature by around first week in October. You could have harvested it and it actually probably would have been ready around mid-September and then harvest it once it regrows and you can harvest that spinach into December, no problem. It's super cold hardy. Carrots, if we had been on the ball, I could have replanted the salad turnips. They would have been ready probably around mid-July and we probably could have got a small crop of fall carrots. They take a long time, but fall carrots, that would have been another 10 to 15 pounds in carrots and there's also the potential of growing stuff like fall radishes, fall arugula. Those are all very fast. I probably actually have time to plant radishes right now. You know, we have a very short growing season. A lot of you watching probably have a much longer one. We live in Wyoming. It's a 120 day growing season here. If you're lucky this year, I, my neighbor already had a frost and it's only September 1st right now. So we are coming to the end of our growing season. So if we could do it here, you can most likely do it in your climate. Um, although that depends on if you're in the South or something like that, because humidity changes things a lot, but our growing season is extremely short. So if you're on to, on the ball with that timing, you can make a lot of things happen. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting at here is if you try and actually get two crops a year, you, double your yield basically in the same amount of growing space that really makes it worth your time to spend you know even an hour a month on this garden would have probably doubled my results here so the potential in this is huge so if you're like me and you started a garden this year and you didn't get the result that you wanted you started it and you didn't get the result you wanted you either did what I did and forgot about it and let stuff get out of control. You grew a big jungle of weeds by July, or you just flat out don't have time to manage a garden. You have kids, you have a 40 hour a week job, and you're lucky if you have an hour a week to spend on a garden. I highly recommend you check out my gardening course at the link in the description below. It's seven hours of content where I explain exactly how we set up this very garden with the no dig style. I teach you how to water correctly, how to plant correctly, how to use plant spacing to your advantage, how to plan your garden, which is probably the most important part to get yourself a reliable source of food in your backyard. This course should teach you how to create your own backyard grocery store. And it's all based on the style of farming that I use to grow $100,000 on a half an acre and probably going to be more than that in the coming years. But it's all those same techniques just catered for your garden. So if that sounds interesting to you, please check out the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share with anybody else that might find this interesting. And I will see you in the next one.